face as you can see in front of me. Got that hat angulation. Now, I had some good luck with the Gladius, with the regulator. But with this one I'd had problems with the anti-tamper. I could fit a regulator and it was work, working really consistent but because you couldn't adjust the power on it, it was a couple of foot pounds under what it was before you fit it. So uh, I was chatting to uh, Martin Copeland on the YouTube channel and he's got one. And he asked if I'd had any updates on it. And I said no but uh, I was thinking of trying to sort it out again. Well, I had to go at it uh, yesterday and I managed to sort it out. So there's two, two anti-tamper caps on this one, the snap-off screws, and the rest it's down to uh, Loctite on the screws. So the way you get it on this one, there's an anti-tamper right at the back and it goes straight through it. It goes through the cocking mechanism, it goes through the back of the hammer spring area and then it finishes up going into the trigger itself, the trigger uh, guard. So uh, what I did to get that one out, it's an M4 uh, bolt in there, probably about four centimetres long. So like I say, it's a snap off cap, so what you need to do is drill down into it, get past the top, and the way I managed to get into this in the end, probably drill down about a centimetre, and then using a hex wrench, I was able to knock it in and unwind it then and get it out. Uh, the other part of the uh, anti-tamper is when you do the actual tune, you actually drill out the, uh, the transfer port and if you take the stock off underneath you'll see the snap off uh, bolt there and basically you take that out and I did this exact same thing that is an M5 by the way and it only goes in about a centimetre it basically locks into the valve uh, area and it basically you take that out and it allows you to drill up through the transfer port to open it up uh, <coughs> Also, there's two, uh, I think there's three millimetre grub screws in the top that you need to come out so you can take the barrel out. Because if you're going to drill in, you don't want to uh, cause any damage to the barrel. You can actually drill the barrel when you get it out. You don't want to do it while it's still in. Uh, and basically, I managed to get the front grub screw out, but I couldn't get the rear grub screw out, so I've got to do a bit more drilling on that yet before I do anything with the uh, transfer port. Uh, the way you get to the rear uh, part, the hammer and everything, is you take off the rear uh, cheek piece, take the two screws out that's on the plate under it, take that off, and then there's a probably about a eight centimetre bolt that goes all the way from here into the stop. So you unscrew that, get it out, the stop pulls off, and you'll see a cap with a hole in it and either side you can see the actual bolt going through so there's a screw either side the cap that needs to come off and they're locked tight it in so you need to use a blade torch for that you need to use a blade torch on all of them on the top underneath and on the sides really we only look to get them out but if you're drilling the drilling the snap off cap top and bottom you don't need to uh, put the heat on it uh, but if it's locked tight it in as well you will do but uh, basically, take that cap off, and once that's off, you take the, the bolt out, and then you can replace it, replace it with an M4 bolt, and basically then get a 4mm Allen key, send it in, clockwise uh, reduces power, and anti-clockwise uh, increases it, because inside the actual tube where the hammer is, it's got like a sliding uh, basically adjusting up which is threaded and as you as you wind it out it comes out and compresses the spring if you if you, you wind it uh, clockwise it depresses it so uh, I managed to do that I'll show you all the pictures of that uh, I've just fitted 
a old loss regulator that I got initially for it that Cliff Kirkman cut down to size. No leaks with it. I did have some when I first put it in, so what I did, I took the uh, ends off the tube and using 3000 uh, wet and dry, like you can get from the, uh, Alfred's, I actually put it on a, a dowel, on a drill, and polished it clean, and that stopped the leaks there. And I put a new seal on the actual end of the uh, regulator that seats up to the valve to stop any leaks coming out of that and there's no leaks now I did the water test so uh, what I'm going to do now it is fitted I'm going to fire a magazine of 14 off downrange and we'll see what the consistency is now I'm expecting the power to be really low uh, but this is uh, the last video in the uh, first sequence of videos showing you the strip down and the initial fitment to the regulator, what comes after this will be tuning it. Uh, what I will do, I will uh, tune the regulator to its current uh, make-up until I can get the glove screw out the top and then I can actually open the transfer portal. What I've done already is put two washer spacers in the actual exhaust valve which is recommended, so I've already done that. So what I will need to do now is uh, adjust the power on the back. It will just see now how consistent it is uh, at the initial fitment, and then we'll take it from there in the next video. So uh, let's see how it does. Eleven point four eleven point seven eleven point eight eleven point seven eleven point seven eleven point eight eleven point seven eleven point seven Eleven point seven eleven point seven eleven point six eleven point Four eleven point five. Okay, so really good actually, considering I've not even put a bloody regulator in it yet. Uh, so yeah, that's that's where it needs to be anyway now. So uh, got it tuned right. Last is eleven eight, average of eleven six, low of eleven four. Uh, go for a few seconds. That gives us an average of 537 feet per second, high of 540, low of 531. That's a spread of 9, standard deviation 2.9. Bloody hell, that's not even regulated until I even need to regulate it. Uh, and that is. Uh, Low down the shot count, we're down to about 100 bar now, so uh, it shouldn't uh, go higher than that. Uh, what I might do, I might top it up and see what it is top end, because we might find the higher up, once the cylinder's full, the actual uh, 
velocity will be lower because it's, uh, it's harder for the string to knock the valve open. So we'll see. We'll see there. Uh, if we find it's pretty low at the top end, that's why I can fit a local regulator. But uh, I've got two two that I can fit. I've got an Ultros and a Robert Lane. So uh, probably try the Robert Lane actually. But uh, yeah, pretty pleased with that. Okay then, I've uh, loaded 14 pallets into the magazine and I'm using the GSB Jumbo Avis and the, these are weighed at 18.1 grains. Let's see how it does. Targets down there are uh, flies. 9 9.6 9 9 9 9 9 9 9 9 9 9 9 9 9 9 9 9 9 9 9 9 9 9 9 9 9 9 and it's as it was initially it's showing about two foot pounds under what it should be the good news is now i can adjust that power and bring it up to 11.5 11.6 so uh, it shouldn't be uh, too hard to do now so then that's an average of 11 uh, 9.6 a high of 9.7 low of 9.5 spread of 0.2 foot pounds deviation 0.1 Go to feet per second. We've got an average of uh, 489 feet per second, a high of 492, a low of 487. So that's a spread of five and a standard deviation of 1.8, which is fantastic results. Uh, so all I need to do now basically is uh, up the power and uh, that is it for this video and uh, we'll uh, see you in the next video where uh, I tune it up to what it needs to be so uh, thanks for watching